Welcome, my name is John Humanic and thank you for coming onto my channel today. I've got an exciting guest today. I've got my mentor and brother in Christ, uh, Prophet Rob Sanchez. Thank you, Rob, for coming onto the channel today. Thank you, John. It is a pleasure to be here and God bless everybody that's viewing. I pray that your day is wonderful. Amen. Amen. So before we get started, I just want to kind of give a little edification. It's not every opportunity that I get a chance to have such a high quality man of God on my channel. Uh, Prophet Rob has been in my life now for about a year and a half, and uh, he's been uh, just an amazing man of God. And I remember when I first got to know him through David Hernandez uh, and that connection, it was a pretty amazing uh, supernatural opportunity for me to kind of come and be mentored underneath him. And it is just an amazing experience so far my faith has been transformed and my life has been also so for me to have you on here is it's both a privilege and an honor to have someone like you here and so i just thank you for coming on board and just blessing the channel in this way well i am super excited to see everything that god is doing in your life spiritually see what he's doing through you and your daughter on YouTube. And mm -hmm. I'm just glad to be able to say I'm a small part of the great things that God is doing in, by, and through your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, you know, for the folks that don't know you, Rob, why don't you get a chance to kind of talk about a little bit of your background, a little bit of your testimony. I mean, you've got some exciting stories and some amazing stuff. So why don't you let the Holy Spirit guide you into kind of just giving you um, an opportunity to just, just kind of speak and talk about some of the things you're doing, where you've come from, where you're going, and uh, and we'll just continue from there. All right. Well, just to give you a little background, I was probably no different than most of the people on the stream. I was not looking for Christ. Christ was looking for me. I tell everybody I am a CEO Christian at that moment in my life. Mm -hmm. And that stands for Chris Christmas Easter only. So I was not looking for God. God was looking for me. My day of visitation happened at the San Francisco Academy of Arts. I was attending a liberal arts school in San Francisco, California, and I was going to further my career in photography. Photography was my passion. Photography was my life. And I remember having to take an oral communications class and the teacher's name was Robert Ponte. And I'll never forget, I stood up, gave a oration and he looked at me and said, F, sit down. I'm thinking in my mind, I hate this class mm -hmm. because I was not there to learn how to communicate. I was there to learn how to do photography. But to make a long story short, this man became the first prophetic utterance I ever received. He began to walk towards me, point his finger at me and began to prophesy. He looked at me and he says, Mr. Sanchez, at by 10 years of your photography career, you're going to come to a crossroad. You're going to lay down your camera equipment and you're never going to pick it up again. And I'm thinking, what is he doing? He says, yeah. matter of fact, he says, matter of fact, you're some type of evangelist. You're an oracle. You're going to travel the nations of the world and the nations of the world are going to seek you out because you will convey a message that comes from the heart. And I'm thinking, I have no idea what you're talking about. But in my mind, I'm adding up how long I've already been in photography. And so he's yeah. telling me that at 10 years, well, 10 years would have brought me to my graduation point. And so he's basically saying, everything is going to shift before you graduate. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of take it as a grain of salt, not knowing that God was actually moving in my life. Uh, the very next week I'm visiting home and I'm talking with my sister and she calls me Precious. Precious is just a name of endearment. And whenever she said that name to me, it was, can you go put oil or can you go change the oil in my car? Can you put gas in my car? Can yeah. you run to the store? Can you do me a favor? And so when she said, Precious, I'm expecting to go do something for her. At this time, I'm 22 years old and her car was way nicer than mine. So when she said that, I'm thinking, cool, I'm going to go drive her nice car. And mm -hmm. she said the unthinkable. She said, will you go to church with me? I had already committed. Not that I was looking forward to going to church. I was, mm -hmm. when I committed and she asked me to go, I remember kind of tilting my head back, rolling my eyes and going like, you, you got me. Yep. And so because I committed, because I had said yes already, I simply showed up. And when I showed up, she meets me, she sits me down in a chair and she says, I'll be right back. 
what she ends up doing is she ends up going and praying and she begins to pray that God would touch me. I began to feel the Holy Spirit. Something inside of me began to move. I am not spirit filled at this time. I'm Catholic. And in my mind, I'm like, I got to leave. And as I went to get up physically out of my seat, the spirit of God descended, fell on me. I bent over, began to weep and cry. I never heard one word that the pastor preached. I don't remember one word that the choir sang. I don't remember anything other than weeping and crying and coming to a place where I said, Lord, if this is you, come into my life. Right there, I get radically saved. No mm -hmm. one, I didn't answer an altar call. I didn't, no one came and did a sinner's prayer. But that day, John, I got mm -hmm. radically saved. No one had to invite me to church ever again. And it all started because of a prophetic word. Yeah, that, that's an amazing testimony. And I know that like uh, from your book, The Prophetic Voice, I remember when I first got it a few years ago and I was just starting my prophetic journey. And uh, you know, when you're when you get to that point, God starts to put like a hunger for his word and, and other experiences like that in your spirit. And I remember reading the your book and and going through that experience. And I remember a couple of things that I want to talk about from your book that just still stick with me is the 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 donation of the camera equipment. Uh, as I think you were in LA at the time. And then uh, you've got the helicopter crash, which is just I mean, mind boggling. And then then where you, you talked about the um, by violence, your faith was taken from you by violence in a return. Uh, I kind of want you to elaborate on that one, because I actually found the scriptures that back that one up. So uh, everything that you talk about in your book can be backed by the Bible. But those stories are so powerful. And, and to, even today, they still resonate with me in a, in a big way. And I had a conversation with God the other day about your cameras that you talked that I want you to allude here in a moment. And, and God talks about how he calls people, but how very few actually answer the call. And, and in your case, it was like you were five hours away. You were you were visiting L.A. And I want to give you a moment to kind of tell you, the, the, talk about those three stories, because those those are just amazing testimonies. Yeah, the first one with my camera, I'll never forget. Um, I was contemplating moving to Southern California. I was part of a ministry team called Imion, and I remember we were all planning to move to Southern California, but we wanted to go check it out. So one day God speaks to me. I'm minding my business, San Jose, California. God puts it in my heart to come to actually Orange County. And he said, uh, I want you to go sit in this service. So I remember buying an airplane ticket. Then we rented a car and I remember driving. It took us probably two hours to get there through LA traffic. And mm -hmm. so when we get there, I remember before I left, I always carried my camera with me. So I take my camera, I put it on my neck and I journey to Orange County, California. The pastor was named Gary. He's standing up preaching this tremendous message. And at the end, he says, I really believe that God wants you to lay down your eyes. And he says, what we're going to do is we're going to do something different. He says, mm -hmm. I want you to pray and I want you to write down on a piece of paper what it is that God is asking you to sacrifice. Well, at that moment, I am engaged to be married to my wife now of 28 years, Miss Juanita, and we're we're in full plans and the swing of getting married. And I'll never forget, God spoke to me and he said these words. He said, Rob, will you give me your camera? When, when I began to pray, mm -hmm. I was thinking, I'm gonna give 20 bucks because that's all I had in my wallet. So my Isaac is easy, it's what I have. Yeah. And when God began to speak to me, he said, I don't want your $20. He said, I want your camera. And I remember him coming to me when I was praying. I had my eyes closed and I said, Lord, what do you want me to sacrifice? In my mind, I made up it's that 20 bucks. And he says, will you give me your camera? And I said, I, I remember, let me say that right. The first thing he said was, Rob, do you love me? And I yeah. said, yes, Lord, with all my heart. He says, if you love me, will you give me my camera? Give me your camera. Yep. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I was planning on giving 20 bucks. Now you are asking for my pride, my joy, the thing mm -hmm. I'm going to school for. You're asking for everything that that builds my identity. I remember saying, yes, Lord. And I remember writing it down, throwing it into the, into the basket as the ushers were collecting. And the Spirit of the Lord came back to me a second time. And he says these words, Rob, do you love me? And I said, Lord, I just sewed my camera. Yeah. What else could you possibly want? And he, I literally could feel the eyes of God looking upon me. And he said, will you give me 
all of your camera equipment. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I said, yes, I walk, I write down on a piece of paper, I walk up to the usher who collected my hand and I said, this goes with the camera. Yep. And I explained to him the whole scenario. The pastor takes the offering and what he does is he begins to open up the slips of paper and begins to read out the sacrifices of the people. And he says, God has commanded me that today what we're going to do is we are going to ask Bible trivia question and whoever answers the question is going to receive the object that someone's laying down. Mm -hmm. So the church wasn't receiving it. He was going to be passing it out amongst the people. And so I'm thinking, surely, God, this is a test. I know yeah. the Bible. I'm going to get it all back. Well, sure enough, it comes to the day where he asked or the moment where he asked for the camera. And he said, he said, wow, somebody here is giving away a brand new camera. And then the usher walks up and he says and hands him the other slip of paper. And he goes, wow, and all of his camera equipment, over five thousand dollars in value. And he said, this is a huge sacrifice. I can't ask a simple question. Mm -hmm. Let me ask a tough Bible trivia question. And you know what he does? He skips through a few and he pulls out one. I could still hear it this day in my mind, the very question that he asked. And he said, can you tell me who are the only two men in the Bible that have had their husband given away to another or their wife given away to another? And mm -hmm. I'll never forget, my hand was halfway up and I'm like, surely, Lord, you're going to give it all back to me. And my hand's like halfway up with anticipation. And when I hear this question, who are the only two men in the Bible to have their wives given to another? Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, ah, I don't know this. There is yeah. no one in the church that knows it except for one woman. Mm -hmm. One woman is raising her hand, jumping up and down saying, I know, I know, I know. And I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm literally believing she's going to be wrong so they could ask another question so I could have another chance. And sure enough, he says, he looks at her and he says, who are they? Mm -hmm. And she said, it is David and Samson. They're yep. the two men in the Bible that had their wives given to another man after they were married. Yep. And he says, you're absolutely right. Come up here. And then he he says these words. He's like, Who's the, who's the young man? Who's Robert that has this camera? And I raised my hand and he says, come up here. So we kind of met in the middle and uh, mm -hmm. I'll never forget. She's crying. I'm crying. Two different reasons. He's yeah. elated and, and he begins to interview her and he says these words. Yeah. He says, he says, why are you crying? And she goes, because God is so faithful. God is so good. And he says, okay, what does this mean to you? And she says, you don't understand. I'm an English teacher. And over the summer, I'm going to Mongolia. And I'm going to be a missionary. And I have been praying that God would give me the best camera equipment so I could do some photojournalism to send pictures to the sponsors and write stories of everything that God is doing on my journey. I have been oh, standing in front of the photography the photography door at our high school. I lay hands on it during break. I stand at it during brunch. I pray and believe that God would give me the very best equipment. And now I'm kind of mad. Oh, yeah. and, I'm thinking, yeah. and I'm a little frustrated because I'm like, God, I had to hear your voice, jump in a plane, then commute by car an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes through traffic to get here to give her this camera. There's nobody in Orange County that has a yes. nice camera. They could have gave to the this precious lady. And I was like, I remember that was just a fleeting thought. Yep. And I remember I'm crying. And he said, he said to me, he says, he says, and how do you feel? And I said, it feels like I'm trying to be obedient. And I remember that that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is that was the beginning of the prophetic word that my teacher gave me. It was a little over a year and a half after I was coming on that two year uh, mm -hmm. trial of, of testing of my faith. And now God is having me lay down my camera equipment because he had something different for me. So yeah, that's a crazy story. Yeah. That's amazing. And even still like, because the thing about it is, is like, think about how many people, because I was, again, I was kind of m munching on that word a little bit recently. And God was like, yeah, all the people in LA. And yet I had to call someone from the middle of the state up North to do something that I, he had been asking others, but you were the only one that was obedient to the call and therefore you received the blessing too. But it's, it's awesome to kind of see God at work and kind of 
kickstart it. Then, so take us through the story with the, the, you were preaching on the mountain and the helicopter. Cause this one, I think when I first read your book, for me, this is the one that was like, blew me away. Like, cause the other ones are amazing, but this was like, oh, this is kind of like, this is next level. Yeah, I was, I was invited mm -hmm. uh, to be a special guest speaker at Mount Muru in Malaysia, East Malaysia, Prayer Mountain for All Nation. I was the first non Asian voice ever asked to come and preach. And so I remember we all met uh, for tea the night before. All the pastors got together, all those that were going to be heli helicoptering to the top. And so I'll never forget when I said yes to it, they sent me Mount Murud. Mount Murud sends you a flyer. The flyer says, train extensively for three months because the hike up the hill is treacherous yeah and i remember thinking well i'm not going to train because i'm helicoptering and yeah. so in the back of my mind i always wondered my god should i have really been like pressing myself to do something and so i kind of just shake that thing off and i'll never forget it we all meet we sit we gather we fellowship the night before we're at the base of the mountain and the base took place at 5,000 square feet of the mountain or 5,000 feet and we were going to ascend up to 10,000 feet so the air stand is really yeah. chilly we're all there we're meeting and i'll never forget uh we fellowship for about an hour. We say goodnight. And when I go to sleep, the spirit of the Lord comes to me and he says to me in a dream, I want you to hike the mountain like Moses. Yeah. And I remember waking up the next morning going, no way. Yeah. Lord, I need confirmation because I'm helicoptering to the top. And so sure enough, my friend, his name was Alex. He comes out. And he says, Rob, I just have this strange impression in my heart that I'm supposed to tell you, God wants you to be like Moses and he wants you to hike to the top of this mountain. And I was like, my goodness, yeah, that's yeah. the same thing that God said to me in my dream. Mm -hmm. And I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that this was God working something out in my life. And I remember saying, yes, well, let me explain this because I didn't prepare. Yeah. I didn't have the clothes for the journey. So here I am. I'm a I'm a larger man compared to all of these Eastern Malaysians. And so I didn't have the climbing gear. So here I am at a base camp in Eastern Malaysia looking for clothes that I can use to ascend this hill. I end up finding quadruple 4XL spandex shorts. They give me a blue poncho because it's raining. They hand me a stick because they say I'm going to be like Moses and they say conquer this hill. Yep. Well, I'm telling you, I am the strangest sight to see. I take my backpack with all of my food, all of my possessions, my Bible, my sermon, everything was in this, all of my rations to mm -hmm. eat for the course of this three-day journey. So I send it to go up in the helicopter and I set out. As I'm on this journey, I'm having the worst time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not I'm, I started off with great joy, but as you begin to walk this mountain and the mountain begins to beat you up, yep. you're no longer celebrating it. I'll never forget, I came to a place where I was climbing up this, this steep hill and I remember seeing a like a uh, a branch that that looked like it's a rail like mm -hmm. to keep you from falling well in my mind when you see a rail and you're going up something steep you put your hand on it and use it as as a point of strength a benefit to help you climb yes. i'll never forget i'm climbing up this hill i put my hand on this rail thinking it's going to help support me well it's not tied down it's just letting you know on the other side is a cliff and so i put my hand on this thing and i'm pulling myself up it falls off i end up tumbling probably 25 feet down this hill mm -hmm. and i remember hitting my leg and thinking oh my god that hurts so bad yeah and i'm thinking as i hear the helicopter go by i'm thinking god what am i doing yeah i climb yeah. Out of that out of that i get to the halfway point it's called hallelujah uh hallelujah trail and i don't know why but they said that was the easiest part of the trail that was the worst part 
I probably fell on this small three foot wide bridge, probably, I don't know, eight to 10 times because it was covered in moss. These mm -hmm. small Malaysian people are very nimble. They walk through it. They had yeah. no problem. Rob, on the other hand, was not as coordinated. My shoes were not were not congruent for walking on some of the, the moss that was being built up with the rain. It was super slick. I remember falling and hitting my legs so hard that it literally began to swell and I began to have like a uh, uh, oozing come out of my leg. And I remember hearing the helicopter and I'm crying, God, what are you doing? It's, mm -hmm. it's called sepsis, sepsis, I believe. And my leg is pounding and I'm thinking, I don't, I, what am I doing, Lord? And I'm, I remember being so overwhelmed that I felt like just giving up, but I, I get up, I pray, and I make it past Hallelujah Bridge. Finally, after about five hours of hiking mm -hmm. up this mountain, I make it to the top and they say, here's your room. There is no luxury at the top of this mountain. They give me a simple straw mat that's about a quarter inch thick, and they say, here's your room, go ahead and rest. I remember lying down, falling asleep, almost instantly. Yeah. When I'm laying down, I'm sitting there going, God, why? You know, and I fall asleep and suddenly there is a loud knock on my door. Pastor, pastor, come, come, mm -hmm. come quickly. And then they said these words, tragedy on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, I rise up, we run and we begin to pray for the safety and mm -hmm. for, for, for the lives. And they come back with the report, everyone in the helicopter died. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing was I was scheduled to be on the fifth helicopter shuttle that day. The helicopter that crashed was number five. Yeah. When it crashed, everyone on it passed away. The only thing three days later that survived the crash was my Bible, my clothes, my food, and my shofar. Everything else in the wreckage was completely lost. There was mm -hmm. nothing salvageable but they came back with my backpack, my clothes, my Bible, and my shofar. They were able to hand it to me as I'm getting ready to go down the hill. Mm -hmm. All I know is this, God didn't tell me that the helicopter was going to crash. He just told me that I was not to be on it. Yeah. He simply saved my life. I guess the easiest thing to say is when you learn to hear the voice of God, the voice of God can save your life, it can save the life of others, but he was speaking to me that day and he saved my life. I'll never forget uh, the other men that lost their life in it. And I was just, I was blown away that, mm -hmm. that God's protection was that great. Matter of fact, my wife was back home in California. She was pregnant with my first daughter. I have three. And if I wouldn't have listened and obeyed to the voice of God, I would have come home, uh, in a whole different way. I would have never met my daughter. I would have never had the family. I would yep. have never met John. And yes. I would never be sharing the story with you. That's the grace of God. That's the love of God. Yeah, you see that, that story is incredible because for me, I have a, a similar testimony that kind of just, it's earth shattering and it's early in my journey. And, and I think I might've talked to you about this before, but I'll kind of reiterate it for for those who are listening. The, I remember when God had told me uh, a message, he says, uh, you will live and not die. And I'm summarizing what he said is, and he goes, you will live and not die. I'm like, okay, okay, father, that's really awesome. Well, what do you mean? He goes, I need you to send this to a friend of yours. And this person I hadn't spoken to in, in probably close to like 25 to 30 years. And I, I didn't have his phone number. I ended up having to call his mom and left a message on her answering machine. She called me back with his number and, and I and I texted him, I reached out to him, I said, hey, you're going to live and not die. And then he replies not long after that, he goes, did you, did you hear what happened? And I'm like, wait a minute, dude, I haven't talked to you in like three decades. Like, I don't know, I just, this is what I hear God telling me to tell you. And he's saved also. So it's not like he's, you know, not, not a Christian or anything like that. And he goes, yeah, I just, I just got out of the hospital and I had a massive heart attack. Here, here he is, he's like early 40s. And I nearly died and I was so shocked. It was so scared that I was going to not make it. And 
your your word encouraged me so much and uh, now three years later he's now uh, running marathons and, and doing all kinds of awesome stuff but like that's the prophetic word is the word when it's given to you you don't always get that picture in fact it's so sometimes it's so partial you're just like wow what am i supposed to do with this and and it's just game changing for that and it's amazing and I think the one other one that I, I wanted to have you talk about is the the one where you talked about in your book about uh, by violence the your your it was taken from you and by violence it was returned because in the Bible and I think this is actually in Second Kings there's a prophet who got struck and and at that time that's what God was talking about by violence it was uh, taken from you by violence it's returned and uh, this was a really wild experience for you. Yeah, matter of fact, I was preaching in Zion, Illinois. Mm -hmm. I was one of many speakers for a prophetic conference. The conference ended. We're at a church that dresses up. It's predominantly black. And I'll never forget, I'm dressed up in a blue suit with a baby blue uh, shirt and a silky blue tie. I'm dressed up. I'm enjoying the Sunday morning service service comes service mm -hmm. ends had a great time conference is over and everybody is kind of saying their goodbyes and so i'm kind of lingering around saying hi to a few different people and now as i'm beginning to make my way to the exits go where all the pastors were there was a gentleman who was probably about 25 yards away he says bye prophet rob i'll mm -hmm. see you next time and i said bye brother god bless you mm -hmm. and then suddenly i was like a bull seeing red and i stretched out my hand and I started to point at him and I started yelling, mm -hmm. literally yelling, never again. Yep. Never again. You hear me? Never again. Well, now I'm no longer just yelling. I take off running right at this guy. I don't know him. I don't know anything of him. Yeah. I'm running at him like a bull seeing red. I kid you not. I yank back my fist. Mm -hmm. And I slug him. Hear me out. I have never been in a physical altercation once in my life. Yeah. Not while I was unsaved. Not while I have ever been saved. This is a, a event that is about to happen. And I kid you not, I pull back my fist and I slug this guy probably four times as hard as I can. John, I'm not mm -hmm. kidding. I hit him as hard as I could. I think I hit his buttons on his shirt and I tore the skin off of my hand. Oof. I mean, I am wow. punching him mm -hmm. and I'm, I punch him four times. He finally falls to the ground. He doesn't need, he doesn't even know it's coming. It's just hitting him. Yeah. Yeah. And he falls on the floor and you would think I'm done. I dive on top of this man yeah. and begin to squeeze him as hard as I could. And I began to release a prophetic word. And the prophetic word was this never again, never again never again will you pick up a prostitute never again will you dream of the days where you are sodomized or raped never mm -hmm. again will you slam needles into your arm for this day the lord your god comes to deliver you i come out of this prophetic act yes <laughs> and the first thought i have is oh my god i'm going to jail yep there is a group of people, probably 10, 12 people that watched me do it. I'm thinking there is no denying. I just assaulted this man. And I said, Lord God, what did I do? I need a word. And God spoke to me. And he said, son, don't worry. Violently, this man's life was taken. Violently, I will give it back to him. This is me. And I remember saying, okay, Lord, I'm trusting you. But I immediately went downstairs to where the pastor of the church was. And I said to him, Pastor, can I talk to you? And he says, yeah. And I said, no, 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 privately. He goes, are you OK? My hair is messy. I'm yeah. sweaty. My, my jacket and suit are all wrinkled. And I look like a mess. And my wife's like, are you OK? And I'm like, yeah, I just need to talk to him. And, and he's like, well, everyone here is part of my five-fold ministry team. Everybody here is family. I have no secrets tell me what happened. And I said, I beat up one of your congregants. <laughs> and he goes, who, who did you, what, who? And I said, I didn't catch his name. He goes, what did he look like? I said, he's five, nine. He was probably 330 plus pounds. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget. 
what he said next and what he did. He lifted up his hands and he goes, praise God. And he goes, that was brother. <laughs> and he names them. Uh -huh. And he says, let me tell you, God gave that man exactly what he needed. He says, matter of fact, I personally wanted to do that. But me being his shepherd, I could not. But I prayed that God would give him an eye-opening experience that would change his life. Let me tell you what this man did. Mm -hmm. He said he took the church's tithes, offering people's hard working money that people work hard for that donated to the church out of love these people gave it to him so he could put a first and a last in an apartment because we're helping this brother mm -hmm. he goes to the landlord and tells him some story the landlord cashed the check gives him cash sixteen hundred dollars of god's money and you know what that man did he said for three weeks he went on a bend on a bender he slammed needles Mm -hmm. He picked up prostitutes and he lived the life of a fool. Yep. And I'll never forget when he said that, I was like, wow. And he says, God used you, prophet. That man's life will be changed. Yes. And uh, 20 years later, I had a chance to interview uh, the brother that, that I hit. And he is now a pastor. He's married. He's in New York. He's doing the work of God. He is elated. Matter of fact, he wore that as a badge of honor. I've been back to that church many times while he was still a member before he was launched out into his own ministry. And he would ask me, hey, prophet, have you done this to anybody else? I said, no, brother, only you, <laughs> only <laughs> you. So I know some people would say, God would never do that. I, I can't explain why he did it. All I could say, I was obedient to it. It was not me, it's not in my nature. But that day, God was glorified, delivered this man, set him free, and now he's in full-time ministry. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing story because dude, the thing about what a lot of people forget is, is that when, when the prophetic word is released and it's received by a person, it's done in their language. And in many cases, a love language. And that may have been at the time, the love language he was experiencing. And whenever he received it, he's like, wait a minute, how does this guy know that I did these things and why is this happening? But it is an, an awakening and we know God is, you know, God, God's a great healer. And so he can quicken all of that and kind of bring someone to attention. But it's no different than God allowing a person in an unrepentant state to kind of go through some things that they probably would otherwise not want to in order for them to come back to repentance. And we, and Bible talks about that. And so God's got a lot of different tools. He's uh, he's pretty cool in that way. And he, he will reach a person in a manner that allows them to recognize, oh, this is God. This isn't this person. This, this person doesn't know me. That's not them. This is God. And I got to pay attention to that. That's amazing. You know, what's so amazing is when I had a conversation mm -hmm. with him, he said, Rob, I understood violence. He said, yeah. I was shot. He said, I'd been mm -hmm. shot two different times, stabbed three or four times before that event ever took place with you. So he's like, I had been in many fights. I had He's like, I understood the language of violence and and yeah. and God knew. God knew how to reach him. God knew how to minister to him. And once again, God took somebody way out of their comfort zone to do something way outside of my character. I mean, like I said, I yeah. had I had I, all through high school, junior high, grammar school, through my whole life, I had never been in a fight with anybody i get along i'm a peaceable person i'm mm -hmm. i'm friendly and and i'll never forget that that was just uh an amazing moment where god used me to do something completely different but yet all for his glory yeah i mean the, the prophetic acts that's the thing about it like they, we, i think there's one of the famous stories that talks about the the person going into the 7-eleven and standing on their head and someone coming out and saying, I, if someone doesn't, God, if someone doesn't come here and stand on their head, I'm going to kill myself. Like there's all kinds of stories like that, that people talk about all the time. I mean, I've got a fair share of just stuff. I remember at my church, I, I was new to this church and God is activating the anointing. And all of a sudden he's like, starts speaking to all these people. And I speak to just a boatload of people, all these words. And here I am, I'm just here. I am a Christian new in this new church. I'm not I'm not under any form of covering. God's like, no, you got to speak to them. And I remember after going through that whole process, I get commissioned onto the prayer team and everyone that came up to kind of lay hands on me, they're like, yeah, 
you prayed over me and you gave me a word of knowledge and you gave me a word of wisdom and you prophesied over me. And it was the entire group that was in the prayer team that I had been prophesying. And I didn't even remember a lot of the conversations because they were just quick and, and, and all those things. But they're like, yeah, you gave me a word that I stood upon and then some really bad stuff happened, but God said, you're going to be fine. And that happened. And so that's the power of God is it, it's, it's in a way that allows people to kind of see uh, the the path that God wants for them, but it breaks them, like we talk about all the time, it breaks them out of their mold and pushes them into a new season. And uh, they can stand on that word and be trustworthy. And, it, and, and just because God's diverse like that, because he is an internal God. So when you're you're infinite, you can kind of do things in infinite ways. You, you, you can't expect the same thing to happen the same time, like the same way the next time. It's always going to be some element of difference for sure. Yeah, you just kind of reminded me of a story when I was in Medellin, mm -hmm. I was asked to go and minister. And at the end of the end of the night, the pastor asked me if I would go and do a special prayer for somebody that was in real need. And I said, yes, sure, no problem. So he, he takes me upstairs into a small room, private room, and he sits me and my wife there and he says, I'll be here shortly. And probably about five minutes later, in walks this young woman and her daughter and they sit there i don't speak uh colombian or i don't speak any form of spanish mm -hmm. so we had no way of communicating but immediately as i was just waiting for the pastor to come to be my interpreter i have a vision of a man being put to death mm -hmm. and i knew it was her husband and the question that i knew that was going to be asked is if he suffered and the answer was no Mm -hmm. Of course, it was stress and everything else, but the answer was no. He was put to death quickly. And I'll never forget, the pastor comes in, sits down, and he says, this this woman is in a crisis and she needs to hear God's word. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, first and foremost, I said, when I was sitting in your presence, I said, I saw two men in the heavens. One was your husband, one was your father. Mm -hmm. And I said, I saw a third man trying to enter in but the spirit of the Lord would not. And I said, this is what I know you need to know. I said, first, your husband did not suffer. Second, you're in a financial crisis and the answer has already been made. And she was like, I said, your husband knew that the partner was going bad. He mm -hmm. knew that he was trying to steal the company. So he signed the company over to you. And she says, no, I can't find the documents. There's nothing that says the company's mine. I'm losing everything. And I said, no, I see your husband in the heavens. I see a large desk, his work desk. I said, he has shown me that if you pull out the bottom left hand drawer, if you pull it all the way out and shine a light up into the upper left corner, mm -hmm. there you will find an envelope where he signed the corporation over to you. I said, the business wow. is yours. The business is not his partners. The business, the whole business is yours. It's yours. And she's like, well, I don't even know. The desk has been taken out of his office. And I said, if you find the desk, you'll find the paperwork. I said, mm -hmm. matter of fact, to confirm this is your husband and this is the word of the Lord. I said, your daughter, your daughter was taken every day to school by her father. I said, they have a special relationship. He would drop her off. She would get, before she would get out of the vehicle, she would kiss him on the cheek. And I said, and, and she would get out and begin to walk. He would not drive away until he saw that she was inside of the gates of the school. The moment she looked back, he would kiss two fingers. He would kiss his two fingers and he would flip his fingers and as he flipped it she would stretch out her hands and she would catch it with her fingers and yeah. as she would catch it she would put it to her lips and that was her daddy's special kiss mm -hmm. and when i said this she the daughter falls on the floor begins to weep and cry and she's yelling papa papa which of mm -hmm. course is father that i knew and so she's crying out father 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 mm -hmm. that's my father and oh, nobody knew that except the daughter mm -hmm. and so god knew exactly exactly where 
the paperwork was. Matter of fact, I've had some strange phone calls and people call me all the time and ask me for crazy things. And and by the grace of God, I've been able to, to locate dogs and keys and I've been able to locate even a person. Uh, not too long ago, probably about a year ago, I had a lady call me and she said, my sister has been missing for three weeks. No one has heard from her. She struggled with the habit and we were all fearful for her life. And she called and she said, will you pray for me? Mm-hmm. I was happened to be walking into a meeting. So I said, I will call you back as soon as I'm done with this meeting. Just give me a couple of hours. Let me preach, minister. And when I come back, I'm going to pray with you. And so I called her when I got back, her and her husband. And the first thing the Lord said is, tell her her sister's not dead. And so I told her, mm-hmm. first thing God wants you to know is your sister is not dead. Second thing God wants you to know is, have you called the local prison? Have you called the jail facilities? And she said, no. I said, your sister has been arrested. I sense in my heart within the next 24 hours, she will call you mm-hmm. and you will know that everything goes all right. Fear not, your sister lives. She's not dead. I believe she's located in a local jail well she got picked up on a charge Mm -hmm. they took away her cell phone she didn't have money to make a call she didn't have nobody's number so for three weeks she was in jail and that day she finally was able to make a call that next morning at like eight nine in the morning she called her sister told her everything that happened and she was blessed but i mean the prophetic sometimes god will use it in in ways that I can't even explain. He'll put me in positions where I'm like, God, I don't even, I don't even want to answer it. How do you answer this? You know, how do you, yeah. you don't, you trust God. And if he fills my mouth with something, I'm bold enough and sometimes crazy enough to say it. And he just uses, he uses people that surrender to his way. So if I could say anything to anyone watching is don't be afraid to surrender your voice to the Lord. Don't be afraid to surrender your heart to the things of God, because when you do, he'll use you in ways that you didn't think possible, but it'll all be for his glory. Amen. Amen. And I definitely feel a a fire burning. So I kind of want to give you a chance to give you the floor and uh and then give you a chance to to speak and and for those who watch the this video the most important thing is is since god exists outside of time his words are timeless and so it doesn't matter when they're spoken because it can be received at any point and since a lot of the words are corporately revealed guess what even though that word may be for someone else you too can receive a blessing from it too so i want to give you the floor prophet rob let the holy spirit go feel free to go as long as the holy spirit lets you and then whenever you feel that peace of release We'll come back and we'll, we'll close this out. Okay. Well, the very first thing I heard was the name Tina. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, Tina, I want to let you know that I've heard your cry. Though everything seems to be crumbling around you, you're not sinking. For I am your strong tower and your exceeding great reward. But even greater, I'm the foundation that you need. Look again at every scenario, and now you will begin to see through my sight. Don't let fear overwhelm you and let faith become your captive. God says, let your faith bring you into captivity, for it will restore your hope, your joy, and your peace. The Lord says, fear not over your family, for I'm at work. I will deliver them from the places of darkness, and I will draw not only you into a place of hope, but I'll draw them into the place of victory. For I will bring those in whom you love out of the darkest of lands and bring them into the true light. The Lord says, because you serve me, so shall your whole household. Tina, I'm for you, I'm with you, and I will bring you through. And great will be the testimony that comes upon your family, says the Spirit of the Lord. I also sense that there is a minister and there is a pastor uh, that is online. And I heard the Spirit of God say, this is the appointed time for the house to be rebuilt. I literally saw all kinds of construction taking place. And I heard you say, my desire is to build something new, to build out and beautify. But you haven't because finances have been in in." in lack. But I heard the Spirit of God say, I'm about to destroy the spirit of delay. 
and I'm going to bring you into a season of acceleration. The Lord says, this is the season where you are like an arrow being launched from my bow. My hand has been opened. The season of release is now. The delay has been pierced and the flood of the Lord will take place. This will be your Baal Purism moment. Like David who broke through the wall of the enemy of the Philistines, so shall I break through this season of hardship that your fellowship has been in and bring you into a place of divine victory. For a new day has manifested and a glory has come. Let your heart not be troubled, but let your spirit rejoice. For the day of breakthrough has come, says the Spirit of God. Matter of fact, I also feel like there is someone that is contending for their families and they're standing and believing for their family to be saved. And I heard the Lord say, Joshua 24, 15, if one in the house serves me, so shall the whole house. He reminded me of Psalms 133, how pleasant and wonderful it is that family dwell together in unity. Then he took me to Isaiah 65 and verse, verse number eight, the Bible says the new wine is found in the cluster. Do not destroy it for the blessing of the Lord is in it. The word cluster means family. I hear the spirit of God say, I am going to renovate families. I am going to send my word and speak my truth. I will send messengers and angels. I will send encounters and visitations, and I will cause the eyes of those that have been led astray to be open to truth. I will call your prodigal out of the sty and into the glory. I will break the yoke off of their neck and I will place a kiss upon their, their head and they will begin to know their purpose and identity and they'll walk in the fullness. I will bring them out of the streets. I will bring them out of their chaos and confusion and I'll restore them to a proper identity. This is my promise, says the Spirit of God. Matter of fact, I, I began to have a quick vision and I heard the Lord say, this is the season in which I will spike the ball. I saw somebody playing volleyball. I saw the ball get set up and I heard the Lord say, it's time to crush it. And when he did it, I literally saw the enemy begin to scour. I heard the spirit of God say, this is the spike season. I'm driving into the spike even as a, and I had this picture of a volleyball, a guy striking down the ball and immediately the spike took me to the story of JL. And I heard the spirit of God say, I am taking a hammer and a nail, and I'm going to drive it through the forces of jail. Everything that has come to be your hindrance, I'm driving out. The Lord says the land will no longer be dark. The land of milk and honey will become the land of promise. This is the season that I give you the authority to drive out the enemy. I heard the Spirit of God say, I'm awakening the spirit of Caleb in the heart of many. You will begin to cry out saying, give me my mountain. Your portion will not be held back, but it will be given unto you. This is is the season to advance says the spirit of the lord hallelujah let me just see if i pick up a few other things um one thing that i really sense is someone has been having an um, afib in your heart your heart has been coming out of out of out of beating and it's been accelerating and then it drops and i heard the spirit of the lord say i will bring your heart back into order and i saw even as it was when they had taken the, uh, Jesus had told them that there was a betrayer amongst them. And that's when he said to Judas, go and do what you're gonna do, go dig and do it quickly. And then John took his head and laid it on the breast of Christ. This is the part of the story I wanna say to you. This is your season to lay your head upon the breast of Christ, even as John did, and hear the heartbeat of heaven. The heartbeat of heaven will reset the cadence of your heart, and it will bring you into a place where your rhythm will not go up or down, but it will hear the cadence of heaven, and you will begin to operate from that realm. God says, I will bring healing to your body. I will bring strength. It's almost like one minute you're strong, and then the next minute you're zapped of strength. I heard the Lord say, I'm creating a stability from this day forward. Your heart will no longer trouble you. This is my promise, says the Spirit of the Lord. I felt like somebody was dealing with a, a peck issue, a right peck, and I literally saw the hand of God come and begin to touch the, the peck area and shoulder area of, of a man. It's almost like uh, you tore a peck muscle or you you strained it while working out and it hasn't felt the same. And I heard the Lord say, I'm attaching the muscle. I am bringing healing. 
the pain that you've been in will no longer be. He says, even now you'll be able to lift your hand above your head. The area of restriction will be broken. The pain that you felt will be no more for surely my healing has come upon you. My word says by my stripes, you are healed. I felt like somebody has been dealing with uh, great sinus issues. It's almost like you got a sinus issue that became a sinus infection and it's now become a lung issue. I heard the Spirit of God say, I'm cleaning out the mucus, I'm cleaning out the mucus, and I'm driving away the pain. The cough, this this almost like bronchitis feeling uh, that you have, God says, I'm cleaning out your lungs and I'm bringing clarity. I will restore your ability to breathe and I will take away the infections that have been in your, in your nasal affecting your ears as well as your throat. I am healing you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I'm cleansing out this infection and I'm bringing you into my glory. This is the day of change and transformation. I feel like God wants to really encourage a woman. I see her as the caretaker of her mother and it's just you and her. And I heard the spirit of God say, I'm adding strength to your hands and I'm encouraging you this day do not let your words become sour and let your heart not be downcast but let the joy of the lord be your strength and i'll give you the ability to help your mother through this difficult circumstance your mother has many needs right now and she needs a handful of love god says my hand is upon you my hand is upon your mother let my love flourish and watch the season change I really believe that there's some inner healing that is taking place between you and your mom. And this is an appointed season that he has set for you, that your heart would rejoice in all that you, uh, all that he has called you to do in this hour. And so I literally see the countenance of your mom growing bright. The words that used to be hard and harsh are now full of life and love. God says, I'm restoring the family. I'm restoring the two of you. I'm restoring love. And I think one of the frustrations that you have, I sense for this woman that I'm, I'm ministering to is you have other siblings, but none are willing to be involved and you feel like you're all alone. But the Lord says, you're not, I am with you. Rejoice for great will be the reward. I also saw a marriage and I saw the marriage being uh, really challenged. I saw a wedge of deception be put in and I saw the heart of the woman that was that was being troubled. The father, the man is contending. And I heard the spirit of God say, hear me, sir. I will deliver your woman from the lie that she has been trapped in. I will pull her out of the place where darkness is called her name. I will shine light upon her pathway and I'll lead her to the land of victory. Stay steadfast in your prayer. Do not lose hope and do not give up for my hand is at work. I will restore the family. And what I saw was the tree. I saw the two of you as a tree and I saw this wedge, this divisive lie. It's a person that has been placed in it and it caused her to lean the wrong way. And I saw all the things in her life beginning to wilter. And when the Lord pulled out the wedge and he pulled her back towards you through prayer, through your intercession and your fasting, through your confession and your declaration. I saw the Lord uh, begin to tie uh, a piece of rope around it. And he said, this is my threefold cord, which is not easily broken. And I saw that the tree began to grow back together. And as it began to mend, everything came back into life. And I heard the Lord say, trust me in the process. I will cause all things to grow back together and produce fruit. This buying will not die. This relationship will not end. Your family shall be restored, says the Spirit of the Lord. My goodness. Whew, I'm telling you, John, it hit me right there. It's the power, the presence of God. It's, it's very, very um, amazing to me that God knows who will be online and whose heart will be touched. And he'll speak words of encouragement. I want to also encourage there's somebody that's watching and your family has been dealing with an issue. How do I say this? Your child believes that they are not who they are. They are caught up in a gender crisis. And I heard the spirit of God say, 
my love never fails because you don't know how to respond. A part of you wants to be angry and lift up your voice, but the Lord says, let love prevail at all times. Love covers the multitude of sin. My love is gentle, my love is kind. The Lord says, let my love flourish. I will bring them to an end. They will come to a place where they recognize the chaos and confusion that surrounds them. And the love that you have given have given and continually poured will draw them out of this dark place and restore them to light and hope. God says, I am their great counselor. I will send visions by day and dreams by night, and I'll invade them with people that will speak the truth. God says in this next season, you're going to see the lies begin to be removed. You're going to see the inner hurt that this child has been in and I'm going to begin to mend them from the inside out. I'm a bomb of Gilead and I am Rapha, their healer. I will restore them because I've heard your cry. Continue to intercede, but let love flourish for love never fails, says the Spirit of God. I just really see God healing some families that are struggling with that gender issue. And what God is doing is he's giving us the power to hold our ground, but to love unconditionally and see a people set free. So get ready. Salvation is coming, says the Spirit of God. That's good stuff. That's it good is. stuff. It is. Amen. And that, that's awesome. Because I, I think the thing about it is, is that it, it's amazing because a lot of people whenever they're prophesying a lot of times, and this is the thing that I love about you, Prophet Rob, this is that the, when people prophesy, you'll get a lot of, in, you'll get a lot of detail, but it won't be specific. And, and you're giving names and situations and to the point where people will recognize like this, they're not, he's not just talking to just anyone. He's talking to me and that's, what's beautiful. And I remember I actually had a, an opportunity uh, and the, a video will be coming out in a couple of weeks where I was talking with Sergio Sanchez and and he prophesied and I remember prophesying over a, a young lady named Shelly at the end and it those things are just I don't know a Shelly I, I don't know a single person but there's a Shelly out there that's going to hear that word and it's going to hit them and Tina and others are just going to receive that and it's going to change their life and that's the power of listening and being obedient to the Holy Spirit because God sees them. Like, that's the thing. A lot of people don't realize God sees them and loves them and uh, and wants to have a relationship, especially for those who don't have, who know Jesus. Like, this is the time to, to just accept him as Lord and Savior and proclaim with your mouth that he's Lord and God raised him from the dead. And, and when you do that, these things get transformed and you walk in just an incredible life. And that's the beauty of the Christian walk is, is that it is amazing and it's incredible and it's there's no yoke attached to it when you when we can get out of our own way it's amazing and, and the holy spirit does the rest so true i think one of the things that we do is we self-sabotage many times in our life we we think ah this can't be instead yeah. of just standing and magnifying the lord we begin to magnify what can't be we magnify the devil if I can encourage anybody today, if you're in a place of trouble, just remember that your praise is always the place that restores you to the center of where Christ is. I like to tell people that praise is like a compass. When you begin to praise God, he shows up right where you're at or he manifests where you are and he begins to point the way out of your difficult place and he'll point you to the place of promise. He'll bring you out of and bring you into everything that he declared. When you understand the power of your praise, one of the Hebrew words for praise is yoda. This word means to hurl a stone or to shoot an arrow from a bow. What it's a picture of is like David defeating Goliath and an archer releasing a arrow to defeat an adversary. When we begin to praise God, we begin to pull down strongholds. What is it? Psalms 149 verse 6. The Bible says the praises of God is like a two-edged sword in my hand. We know that our weapon of our warfare is carnal, but it's mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So when you don't know what to do and you feel like I can't praise or you feel like I can't pray, praise. Mm -hmm. Praise 
enter into his courts with praise through his gates with thanksgiving when you begin to enter into praise thanksgiving will come when thanksgiving manifests it's a time of celebration because everything transforms god is bringing a people into a place of divine worship the bible says he is enthroned in the praises of his people when we begin to lift up our mouth and begin to praise and testify we begin to release christ into the atmosphere john John 19, 10 says, worship God. The testimony of Christ Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The moment you begin to worship, the spirit of Christ begins to manifest. And what does he do? He encourages people. We see that Jairus is in a difficult moment. He leaves the bedside of his daughter who is about 12 years old while death is knocking on the door. He runs to the synagogue and what does he do? He falls on his face and he begins to worship Jesus. He stands up and says, Jesus, will you come to my house? Here's the principle. Christ always follows the scent of a worshiper. Where worship is, Christ will be following. We see it again in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. Paul and Silas are placed into a prison because they casted out a spirit of divination out of a young girl in the midnight hour midnight means the darkest hour it means it means the time of torment or trouble in the darkest hour paul and silas made a made a sound what was their sound they began to pray prayers and sing hymns unto the god unto the lord when they began to sing the earth shook and the prison doors opened do you realize that your praise your worship shakes the earth when, when an earthquake manifests, it's a sign or a Greek word called seismosis. It's a sign that the plate shifted beneath the surface and the greater settled on the lesser. When we feel a natural earthquake, we think, oh, it's, it's an earthquake. The truth is it's an aftershock. We feel the aftershock of what God has already done beneath the surface. Can I say it like this? Your praise shifts things in the foundations and then when you feel it shifting in the earth it's your moment to celebrate because the doors are being opened your praise will free more than you it will free all that are around you paul and silas weren't the only ones that were freed from the prison every person in prison had the prison door open and then the last thing we see is that praise opened the door to salvation to the philippian jailer jailer he and his whole household said what must we do to be saved and paul says call on the name of the lord jesus christ and your family shall be saved can i tell you that your praise brings about salvation it brings about healing it brings about victory it brings about deliverance it brings dead things to life because when jairus gets to the house his little girl is dead but jesus puts everybody else out except for the family and says little girl arise and she rises to her feet i'm here to declare to you let your praise be heard and see dead things come to life broken things be restored bound things be set free walls walls removed and glory rebuilt amen i bless you all amen amen so prophet rob why don't you take a moment to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that are coming up for you we've got your source school and uh, where they can find you too, like your website, uh, where they can partner with you and, and any social media things that you wanted to kind of include too. Because yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be edified and they're like, wow, I wanna get some more information. All right, for those of you that don't know me, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, uh, as well as TikTok. All of my handles are the same. It's Prophet Rob Sanchez. So P-R-O-P-H-E-T, Rob Sanchez. You can find me on YouTube every Tuesday, every Thursday. We go live. We do a special time at noon of prayer at specific standard time. We pray for people. We prophesy. And then on Thursday nights, I share a prophetic message that God places in my heart. And then we minister to God's people. We got a lot of great things taking place. Our ministry is currently in a raffle. We just purchased a building. We're raising funds, and one of the ways we're raising funds is we are raffling off a Harley Davidson motorcycle. So if you're a motorcycle fan or one that just likes to help people accomplish the God goal, the God vision, you could go to our website, ProfitRobSanchez.com, and you can purchase a ticket right through there. Also, 
our Source School of Ministry will be listed on our website. What is Source School of Ministry? SOAR is an acronym that stands for Sears Oracles Anointed to Roar. I believe God has placed a mandate in my life to raise up another generation of prophetic. But I'm not one that believes you can raise somebody up overnight. I believe it takes time and I believe it takes encouragement and also believe it takes um, a willingness to work one with another. This is the reason why we have our prophetic encounters. We have our source students come. They're able to gather. They stand on the pulpit or platform with me and they're able to share and express their gift. So if you're interested in learning about the prophetic, I'm not just going to teach you how to prophesy. My greatest desire is to teach you how to live a lifestyle that is prophetic, that you would be able to see and hear God's voice at all time, understanding he doesn't come and go, but he lives with you. You would learn through our class, you're going to learn the difference between like the spirit of prophecy, gift of prophecy, the office of the prophet. We just concluded this last semester where we talked about dreams, visions, and interpretations. Soon we will be entering into a time where we'll begin to talk about the difference between the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. We cover everything. And it is a class that is built to help you grow. If you do the homework and you do the certain uh, the assignments that we give, all I could say is your life will be radically changed. The word of the Lord will be in your mouth. When you open your mouth, you won't have fear because you'll prophesy in confidence, knowing that God will deliver a people, help a people, or most of all, encourage and build someone up. And so that's a little bit about what our Source School of Prophecy is all about. And once again, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, as well as TikTok. We put out content of encouragement. That's my greatest desire is to encourage others and strengthen them by God's prophetic word. Amen. Yeah, I, I, can, I can definitely attest to the Source School of Prophecy myself. It's, uh, like I said earlier in the video, it's game changing. It really does uh, put you in the right mindset. But I think the thing that I tell everyone is, is it pours the proper concrete in order to have a foundation that doesn't shake. And it's really important that the there's different aspects to prophecy. Obviously, you prophesy from your metron, you prophesy from the word that's stored up in you, and but you still have to have the right um, the right heart. And I remember when I started on my prophetic journey, uh, I was kind of uh, teetering between like this orphan spirit and, and an, you know being able to be like you know an adopted son of God. And I remember my local pastor started speaking into me. And then when I went to soar for those first couple of weeks and you talked about the the new dawn prophet and the rooster and how that's actually a sign of a new day. And and God talks about that in Lamentations that these things that, you know, there there's mercies and these things are new every morning. And that kind of transformed me and really put me in a spot where I needed to be. But I think the thing, to be honest with you, the prophecy side of stuff is amazing. There's no question about it. But I think the thing that the Source School of Prophecy did for me, and, and I would really encourage anyone that hears me that to, to seriously consider it, is, is that it built the intimacy with God to the next level. And then when you get that intimacy with God, that's where you get the revelation knowledge. And more times or not, that revelation knowledge is for me. And so I, I do overflow. And even on this channel, we'll publish tons and tons of prophecy videos, but we're receiving dramatically more for ourselves. And those are the things that transform your life and put you on the path that God wants you to. And guess what? You can get on that perfect will of God and stay on that path and you never veer from it. And even, and even when you can start to feel the pull, you'll know this isn't from God. You could sit in your prayer closet. He can minister to you and boom, move forward. And to me, that has been the, the greatest uh, aspect because it goes back to what Jesus said to uh, Martha. She said, when Mary was sitting at his feet, this is the only thing that's required. Like he didn't talk about those other things. He talked about, you just got to sit at my feet. And that to me is what that that's where everything's birthed and it becomes amazing and everything that comes out of it. In addition to that, that to me is just gravy, but it's all awesome because it, it builds on that foundation. That's Jesus. And that foundation's immovable. Yeah, and last thing I want to do is I want to just let you know, May the 17th and 18th, for those of you that are in the Midwest and can get to San Antonio, Texas, we will be having our Prophetic Encounters Conference, and it's going to be a Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday night services. 
Then Sunday morning, I'll stay and I'll preach for the church. But I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. If you can get to San Antonio, join us at the House of Freedom. Uh, I'm sure we'll be able to post a, a flyer or something, all the times and the dates, so you will be able to know. But I'm telling you, if you can come Saturday morning, that's one of our highlights. We do something that most people have gotten away from. We do prophetic call out rooms for the people that come and sit in that service. We're going to have probably six to 10 people helping me prophesy. And what we're going to be doing is ministering to as many people as possible. I think we have 10 confirmed SOAR students already that are coming. And if you are hungry or in need of a prophetic word, I'm telling you, come and be a part of this conference. God will speak into your life. He'll pour out. He'll bless. I am so looking forward to it. I pray that you would be able to join us there and receive from the Lord himself. Amen. Yeah, I know it's going to be a great time for sure. Amen. All right, Prophet Rob, well, thank you for joining us. I'm excited to, to see how, uh, if you've got any comments, put them in the chat, and then we'll we'll definitely get you back on here and, and talk about what has happened in between. I'm looking forward for those future conversations. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh,